Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So the Social Security Administration is trying to claw back millions of dollars of overpayments to numerous beneficiaries. People are getting letters in the mail saying that, hey, you might owe us like $30,000 because we overpaid you for the last 10 years or something ridiculous like that. Now, lawmakers are finally kind of fed up with this and they're doing something about it. They wrote a letter. So we're going to be going over what that letter says and what they're demanding from the Social Security Administration. Plus, we have GOP senators warning House Republicans not to impeach President Biden. We'll be going over why they're saying, hey, maybe back up. Let's not do this. Probably not the best idea. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive 20 free stocks from Webull, which is going to be worth at least $60 in free stocks or $60 in cash if you sell those stocks and transfer that money back to your checking account, I will be leaving a link in a pinned comment below and some links in the description box below where you can receive just that. Okay, so diving right into our lead story for, today, for today's video, we have, of course, President Biden. It looks like they are going to try to impeach him in the House and the Republicans do, a, ha, do have a majority in the House, so it very well could happen as long as they get every Republican on board. But we actually have a GOP senator saying, hey, maybe we should slow this thing down. I don't think we should exactly go for impeachment in the House ruling covering why. So according to The Hill, Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen is warning House Republicans that President Biden could not be impeached and removed from office for any conduct or crimes committed before he was elected president in 2020. Mullen's statement in an interview with Newsmax pours cold water on a House GOP investigation into Biden's family's business dealings, particularly Hunter Biden's work with foreign companies while Biden was vice president during the Obama administration and immediately after. He warned that any high crime or misdemeanor that may serve as the basis for articles of impeachment, quote, has to be committed while he was in the office, the current office he holds. So what he did as vice president, what he did between the two offices may not be impeachable. If they send us a case, make sure it's convictable. The bar is real high. There's no real question about it. Now, other Republican senators, including Senate Republican Whip John Thune and Senator John Cornyn, a member of the leadership team, has warned the House investigators that there's little to no chance of convicting Biden in a Democratic-controlled Senate. Convicting Biden and removing him from office would require 67 votes, which means at least 80 which means at least 18 Democrats would have to vote for conviction to produce a result. And let me tell you, other than maybe someone like uh, Joe Manchin or uh, Kirsten Sinema, uh, those who sometimes vote against what Democrats say, I can't see, I really can't see a single Democrat voting to impeach Biden, just like we didn't see too many Republicans vote to impeach Trump. Uh, we might actually have seen more Republicans vote to impeach Trump than we will see Democrats vote to impeach Biden. Sometimes it just goes like that. And they really just have one year to impeach him. So it's a very fast track that they would have to uh, go through if they wanted to impeach him. And like they just mentioned there, there's absolutely no chance of him being impeached in the Senate. So does it really matter to impeach him in the House if there's no chance to impeach him in the Senate? Just like I was saying with Trump, it was all messaging, all pretty much a waste of time to try to impeach the guy when in all reality, they pretty much knew it was going nowhere. And other than that, there's just a whole lot more important things going on that they need to solve rather than impeaching the current president. You know, there's a homeless issue. There's a, a problem with Social Security. In 10 years, if nothing is done about the program, everyone receiving it is going to receive a cut of anywhere between 20 to 25%. And then there's this whole other issue currently going on uh, with recipients of Social Security where they're waking up, they're checking their mailbox, and they're seeing this you know, very scary letter from the Social Security Administration saying that, hey, we overpaid you for the last 10 years. And because of that, because of our fault, you now owe us $30,000. And even though you don't have $30,000 sitting around, hey, you still have to repay us within 30 days. 
This is absolutely complete insanity. And finally, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans are fed up with it, and they actually sent the Social Security Administration a letter asking some questions and trying to clear up this whole issue. So according to Fox News, lawmakers want to know why the Social Security Administration has reported erroneously overpaid benefits to millions of Americans and then hit beneficiaries with demands for repayments to the tune of thousands of dollars. A bipartisan letter was sent by House members in the, in the Ohio delegation presses by the acting commissioner of the Social Security Administration for answers on its effort to claw back overpayments from Americans, many of whom did nothing wrong. Those affected are elderly or disabled people on a fixed income who may have their benefits frozen or cut until their debt is paid off. So just imagine that, receiving a letter in the mail saying that you owe us $10,000. You don't exactly have $10,000 sitting around in the bank, but they say if you don't repay that amount within 30 days, then we're just going to completely freeze your payments and we're not going to send you anything else until it is all paid off. How unfair is that? How ridiculous is this? This is obviously a terrible situation. And if uh, you or I are not in the situation and we weren't one of the ones that were overpaid, still, I mean, just imagine that we were. Just like, what would you do in that situation if you received a letter in the mail saying that you owed the SSA $10,000 and that you had to pay them back within 30 days? How like how scary of a situation would, would that be? Just put yourself in the shoes of a person who was in that exact situation. So they actually wrote a letter here and they said that almost a million Americans are negative, negatively impacted every year by improper payments made by the Social Security Administration. Social Security Administration. Many of these improper payments are in the form of, a, of an overpayment, some of which occur through no fault of the recipients. The process by which the SSA recovers these overpayments can often be burdensome and time intensive, causing beneficiary harm. Overpayments can go undetected for months or even years, and the overpaid beneficiaries are often unaware until they are on the hook for the mistakes of the SSA. The recipient may have done everything correctly and followed all the rules, but the SSA errors resulted in an overpayment. They said that we have concerns that each of the beneficiaries who were interviewed for the 60-minute segment had requested an overpayment waiver from the SSA and were either continuing to appeal or had been paying the debts. However, after the 60-minute segment aired, all the debts for each of the recipients were waived. The system for who the system for who does and does not receive a waiver should not be based on national media coverage of their claims. So a couple of interesting things there. Of course, there was that coverage on 60 Minutes where they talked about that. That was very important. It brought this whole situation to light. But at the same time, they're saying there that, hey, just because someone goes on national TV, it should not necessarily mean that their claim should be waived. They're waiving that because they don't want the bad press. What about all these unlucky people who aren't able to go on TV and make their claims? It's not really exactly fair that people who aren't able to go on national TV can't get their weight, can't get their you know debt waived by the Social Security Administration, but these people who are able to go on TV are. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense there. Then they go on to ask a few different questions. So they're asking, what is the current guidance that the SSA provides to its employees to administer the equity and good conscience standard for, for providing waivers? How does the SSA ensure that this policy is administered fairly across the country. They also ask how many full-time employees has the SSA devoted to collecting and clawing back overpayments from beneficiaries over the last 10 years? What is the average wait time for an overpayment appeal process and for an overpayment waiver to be granted? How quickly does an average beneficiary wait until they hear back from their after their first appeal? How does the SSA adjudicate clawback claims that do not have full documentation? How far back can the SSA go to to uh, retrieve an overpayment? Can the SSA require family members to pay for overpayments made to another family member? And the 60 minute segment noted that the SSA was reviewing its overpayment policies and procedures. What is the timeline for completing this review? And they wanted answers by January 12th. Um, so obviously just a, a terrible situation going on. They really should have kind of a period of time which they can wait to uh, ask for overpayment, maybe a few years or something like that. They shouldn't be able to claw back payments from 10 years ago, for example. It's just not uh, exactly fair. Now, other than that, of course, we have that issue where in 10 years, if nothing, if nothing is done about the Social Security uh, program, 
Uh, they will be going insolvent, which at that point payments will still go out, but they will be 20 to 25% less. We need to make sure to get inflation down. We need to make sure that people on social security benefits are getting a fair cost of living adjustment that's actually keeping up with inflation. There's a whole homeless issue, just lots of things going on in this country, probably of greater importance than impeaching Biden, especially given that there's no chance he will also be impeached in the Senate. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. But that's all we have for today's video. Certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.